Welcome to um, a deep dive, you know, a deep dive into the life and career of heavy metal vocalist Paul Diano. You might know him as the voice behind those iconic first two Iron Maiden albums. Yeah. But there's more to him than just that. Grit, resilience. Definitely. And even a surprise encounter with the man who replaced him. Yeah, what always gets me about Diano is that his story, it just, it speaks to this like unyielding passion for music. You yeah. know, even when things got tough, he never gave up. It's a story about resilience, about dedication. It really is. And about leaving a real mark on music history. So before we get to Iron Maiden, let's rewind, you know, back to the beginning. Okay. Paul Diano, born Paul Andrews. Right. East London, mm -hmm. 1958 drawn to music from like a young age just picture him you know cutting his teeth in those early bands finding that raw talent in those pubs and clubs it's like the prerequisite origin story for any British rock star, wouldn't you say? It really is. I mean, we see that period of like musical exploration with so many artists. Right. And it's just fascinating. They're experimenting, they're searching for their voice, playing with different musicians. And then boom, everything just clicks. Yeah. And for Diano, that click, man, it reverberated through the entire world of heavy metal. Because that click, that was Iron Maiden. Yeah. 1978. Yeah. He joins this band that at the time was still trying to find its own sound. Right. And man, talk about a moment where the stars just aligned. It changed both their destinies. Oh, absolutely. And you know, this wasn't just big for them. It was huge for the entire trajectory of heavy metal. Diano, he just, he injected this raw, almost punk infused energy into Iron Maiden's sound. Uh -huh. It defined an era. And I think we need to remember, this is a time when heavy metal was still kind of like figuring out what it was. Yeah. You know, a lot of the big sounds were like blues-based, almost theatrical. Right. But Diano, he comes in with this like gritty streetwise energy mm -hmm. and it resonated with a generation that was hungry for something, well, something more, something real. And you hear that rawness on every track of their yeah. 1980 self-titled debut. Oh, yeah. Iron Maiden. Absolutely. Aggressive, unapologetic. It was a punch to the gut. Yes. And it put them on the map. It put them on the map. And that sound, that energy, it directly influenced the new wave of British heavy metal. And for anyone listening who's maybe new to this chapter, picture this movement. It was all about stripping away the, I don't know, the excesses and bringing back that raw power, that pure heavy metal sound. Bands like Diamond Head, Saxon, Def Leppard, they all emerged alongside Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah, they were all part of that movement. And that rawness, it became their signature. And, you know, you can't forget Diana's lyrics. Right. They were different. They weren't singing about, you know, dragons and wizards and stuff. They were telling stories about real life, about the streets, about working class struggles. Exactly. That resonated with people. And then comes 1981, Killers, their second album with Diano. And it just, it solidified their place in heavy metal history. Oh, absolutely. Seminal album. But then, same year, Diano's out of Iron Maiden. Yeah. And it gets kind of shrouded in this, you know, private matters within the band kind of thing. Right. And, you know, there's always going to be speculation. Of course. But I think it's important to respect his privacy. You know, he made that choice. And what we can focus on is the incredible music he made during that time. Music that, you know, literally helped define heavy metal. And the thing is, he didn't just, you know, disappear after Iron Maiden. This yeah. is where we see that relentless drive. He just, like poured himself into all these different projects, yeah. almost like he had something to prove. He did. He had this fire in him. And that's what I admire about him, you know? Yeah. He wasn't going to back down from a challenge. He met it head on, and he brought that same raw energy, that same passion to everything he did. Battle Zone, Killers, no relation to the Iron Maiden album. Right. Ha. Huh. Even Gog Magog, this, like... Supergroup with former and future Iron Maiden members. Oh, yeah, that was a wild one. All bear his mark. All uh, have that Diano stamp on them. Yeah. And then, of course, there's his solo work. Yeah, his solo stuff. For me, that's where we really get to see him, you know, stretch his legs, artistically speaking. Right. Take Battle Zone, for example. Okay. Now, that band allowed him to experiment with a heavier, more aggressive sound. Oh, interesting. And their debut album, Fighting Back, it's a perfect example. Okay. Relentless riffs, Diano's signature rasp taken to like 11. Wow. This wasn't just Iron Maiden part two. This was Diano carving out his own space, pushing boundaries. It was like leaving Iron Maiden gave him the freedom to really like, you know, 
explore all these different sides of himself musically. Exactly. And you have to remember what the music scene was like back then. The 80s, it was just bursting with creativity, especially in metal. Yeah, absolutely. Diano could have easily just, you know, ridden the Iron Maiden wave. Right, right. But he didn't. He kept pushing, kept evolving. And, you, you know, through all of this, through all these projects, he still got that connection with the fans. Oh, absolutely. That, that working class ethos, you know, it just shines through. Yeah, it's real. Makes his music so relatable, even today. Exactly. And that's what makes the next part of his story, well, it's bittersweet. You mentioned the health challenges he faced in the 2010s. Yeah, and this is where Diano's story, it, it takes on like another level of resilience. We're talking by the 2010s, he's performing in a wheelchair. Wow. Openly battling health issues, major knee surgery in Croatia in 2022. Yeah. I mean, anyone else, they might have just stepped away from the stage, <laughs> yeah. you know? Absolutely. It's understandable. I Diano. No, no, not him. See, Diano, he was a fighter, through and through, on stage, off stage. It didn't matter. Think about it. Major surgery. And instead of taking it easy, what does he do? He pushes even harder. I know, right? Over a hundred shows since 2023 alone. That tells you everything you need to know about his dedication to the fans, his love for performing. It's almost defiant, you know, like like he's saying, you're not going to slow me down. I'm going <laughs> to keep making music, keep what? connecting with the people who matter for as long as I can. Exactly. And that's a powerful message. You know, it's like no matter the obstacles, no matter what life throws at you, keep pursuing your passion. Don't let anything hold you back. Absolutely. And it reminds us, you know, it reminds us that music it can transcend those limitations, physical, yeah. whatever. And then and then it's almost like something out of a movie. You know, yeah. Tell me. Deanno has this like unexpected encounter with Bruce Dickinson. Oh, wow. The man who replaced him in Iron Maiden. No way. That's that's not just two musicians bumping into each other. That's that's heavy metal history right there. Right. Like, picture this. July 2024, Zagreb, Croatia. Okay. Dickinson's there on tour. Diano's there for treatment after the knee surgery. Wow. Okay. And somehow, they end up backstage at a Dickinson show. You're kidding. See, this is what I mean about the media always trying to stir things up. They would have you believe it was this big, tense standoff. Right, right. But it wasn't like that at all. It was a reunion. They hugged, they chatted, even joked about the media hype. I love that. Can you imagine? Years of speculation, this supposed rivalry in yeah. these two icons, just they just embraced the moment. They were bigger than all that. You exactly. Know? And both of them, they've spoken highly of each other, you know, acknowledging their different styles, their contributions to Iron Maiden. Because it wouldn't have been the same band without either of them, right? Exactly. Think about it. Diano, he was the raw energy, the grit that launched Iron Maiden. Mm. Then Dickinson comes in with that incredible range, that operatic style, takes them to like arena rock god status. Right. Two sides of the same heavy metal coin. You know what I mean? I have even heard Diano say that Dickinson's voice, it wouldn't have worked on those first two albums. He's just right. They needed that aggression, that rawness yeah. that he brought. Exactly. Those early albums, they needed that raw, almost punk edge that Diano delivered so well. And to hear both of them acknowledge that, recognize their own strengths, their contributions, it's pretty special, you know? It is. It's a shame their time together in Zagreb was so short-lived. Sadly, just a few months later, October 21st, 2024, Paul Diano passed away at his home in Salisbury, age 66. Oh, man, that's that's tough. His final solo performance was in Krakow, Poland, just a few months before, you know, performing right up until the end. There you go. That's dedication. It's mm -hmm. Well, it makes you think, doesn't it, about what really matters. He could have easily just, you know, taken it easy, but he loved it too much. He did. Uh, and he left us with one last gift, you know, his album, The Book of the Beast, a career retrospective released just a month before he passed. Wow. Talk about going out with a bang. That's not just a collection of old songs. It's a statement, a reminder of this incredible journey, the impact he made. From those early days in those East London pubs to headlining stages around the world. I mean, Diano's story, it's its one of passion, perseverance. Absolutely. Yeah. And just this refusal to let anything extinguish that love for music. He never compromised, you know. No matter what he faced, he stayed true to his vision. And that's something we can all learn from. Yeah, and, you know, his voice... It might be silence, but the music that lives on. It does. It does. And it makes you think, like, what would heavy metal even sound like today without him? Without that snarl on those first two Iron Maiden albums. Oh, man. Those albums, those were landmarks. You know, they weren't just albums. They were like 
a whole new era for heavy metal. I can't imagine the genre without them. They sparked something, that's for sure. They did. A whole generation of musicians and fans, and we're still feeling the impact. There's an honesty to Diana's voice, you know, a realness, a grittiness that people connected with. Oh, absolutely. They heard their own stories in his music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Their frustrations, their dream. And that's the thing about Paul Diana's story, isn't it? It's like proof that raw talent and passion, they can change the world. No doubt. He was a working class hero who never forgot where he came from. And his music, it's still inspiring people today. Absolutely. And I think he reminded all of us, you know, that heavy metal, it's more than just noise. It's more than just a bunch of guys with guitars. Yeah. It can be a voice for the people who don't have one, you know? Yeah. A way to fight back against the man, a celebration of being who you are. It can be. Well said. Well, that about wraps up our deep dive into the life and music of Paul Diano. For those of you listening, we'd love to hear from you. What Diano song or album, you know, really speaks to you? Was it those early Iron Maiden days, something from his later career, maybe even a track from his final album? Let us know. Until next time, keep diving deep.